Hey folks, Engineer775. Uh, the video you're about to watch is my attempt to try to help some people that are really battling with utilities that have gone to a time of use, they've gotten rid of net metering, they've gone to time of use scheduling and rates, and the unfortunate thing is a lot of times during those times it's um, very hot, especially where we are right now, and so folks have huge air conditioning loads and they get charged extra per kilowatt. Um, there's crazy rates. One of the rates is $13 times the highest one kilowatt hour per month. And so they're getting demand charges up to, you know, I've seen 200 to $250 above or added to their usual bill. And so this is an attempt to build a system using an inverter and battery only uh, to mitigate that high cost that they're having to pay each month. So we program the inverter to offset the grid. As you see on this chart, I'm using battery from three in the afternoon to six, and then I go back to charging the battery back up, just on grid, but it's at a cheaper rate. This can be $200. You know, if there's a spike and there's two HVAC units and water heater, if they get an hour of say, you know, 10 kilowatts, 10 kilowatt hours times $13, $130 during this time. Outside of this time, it's like 11 cents, 10 to 11 cents. So we don't want to use grid during this time. So we built this system to not only do this to get rid of that demand charge, but also to give some backup power if the grid does go down. And we added some bells and whistles to be able to start their HVAC off of the battery and inverter. Of course, you can add solar. And during this time of day, the solar obviously helps tremendously but you don't have to add the solar. It can just be a battery and inverter system. Simple system can be battery and, and inverter. More complicated can be battery and inverter and wire the house so that you can give power to every breaker in on the property. And then of course, it gives you the ability to add solar. And we also add a generator to this customer so that he could charge his batteries up. And uh, But now he's super motivated to put solar on it. So I imagine the next few days he's gonna to do that. So anyway, hope that makes sense. This is to help people that have had that have lost net metering, um, that have had these new new charges forced on them. And this is a way to, I want to say fight back, but a, a way to get rid of that demand charge that you get on a monthly, monthly basis. It's dark in here because I've got the meter base pulled. We are wrapping up today, I hope. Um, this is the demand charge mitigator. Everything is built so that it can take 200 amps through and out to the loads and hopefully offset the entire load of this house during the demand use or time of use times by the utility. So on this utility, they're quite excessive. And so the goal is to zero that time out. We're going to program the inverter to do that. He doesn't even have solar. Later on, we can add solar to the system. And let me take you outside and show you the disconnect arrangement. So we put in bypasses and uh, utility required disconnects that um, are necessary to, well, we just passed our inspection. We know why they're necessary. So out here with the disconnects, here's the AC disconnect. And we have two bypasses for each of the 200 amp panels. And that is a requirement by our local utility whether it's Duke Power or any of the co-ops, they require a lockable lever disconnect. Now, some people are inserting things like the grid boss and in place like that, but that will only work on a 200 amp service unless you can parallel the grid boss, which I haven't heard of. So what we do is everything is built out to supply power for a house that has a 320 amp service. So this is a... 320, 400 amp service that has two 200 amp panels. When we get done today, hopefully, we will have the ability to run any and every load, not together, but any load that this customer has, including his shop and his garage with EV charger off of the system. We also put a little generator inlet plug back there for a uh, 30 amp generator input to charge the batteries later on he's going to dabble with some solar and see if we can find a place to put solar on the property but now he just wanted a battery backup uh, peak shaver a demand mitigator i'm calling it so 
don't be fooled by the gimmicks that are out there. And I run into so many houses that have, you know, two panels. Uh, they're being fed by a 320 amp service and you can't do it unless you parallel the bypasses and do what we're doing here. So if you got questions about what is going on here, we run into this a lot. This has probably been 75% of our work is running the entire home, but allowing the customer to do his own load management. And uh, anyway, we got one panel almost done. We're on to the next. Mission accomplished. We are running the whole house. We used about 15% of the battery. Um, we're just putting a microwave soft starter in the air conditioning unit. I am so hot, I can't even think. Um, long, hot day today, but uh, customer's happy. We uh, accomplished what we came to do. Okay, outside, everything's buttoned up. We are running on the inverter. You can see how we have our bypasses labeled inverter and inverter, and the Solark is running the show on batteries only. And we were able to run everything which was a lot of fun we also put a micro air flex easy start in the uh i think it's a four ton unit it's nice with the flexes now you don't even have to pick a range they work from <laughs> two ton to seven ton so you just install them and they just work we added an outdoor panel here we basically took anything that was connected to the grid and put it on our system so a lot of work, a lot of, just a lot of work. Mainly because it's so stinking hot. It was 95 here today and we're dying. So uh, if you need, if you need to uh, go to war, no, I'm just kidding. If you want to zero, be able to run your air conditioners, because this guy was not running his AC during the time of use to try to and be empowered and not have a power bill. He was running his thermostat up to 84 degrees. So now he doesn't have to do that. He's gonna be able to run through that time of use time on his batteries only and have no problem. And we added a cool little Reliance. He's picking up a, a 6,500 watt generator and he's ready to go here. You can plug that in, L1430. Excellent, all ready. So we passed inspection and it's time to go jump in the lake. So, let me know if you have any questions or you're interested, if you're interested in zeroing out your time of use or demand charge. Again, he has no solar here. So he's gonna, he's got some solar panels. It's um, an HOA. I don't know how much he's gonna be able to get away with, but he's gonna try that on his own. We showed him how to make that connection and how to do that. But for now it's an inverter, battery, grid, and generator only. Um, able to, uh, but he's running the whole place. Got multiple garage. This place goes on forever. Nice shop. Got a lot going on here. But he's he's been working with timers, and he's done a lot of work with some, I think, Emporia, and now with the inverter in in place, he's got a full house data acquisition unit, so he can uh, see what he's doing. So he's got an EV. Um, so. When you're doing this and you're running solely on battery, that can test the inverter um, and see how, how long it'll go because you're running just on inverter. So I'll be monitoring the temperatures of the 15K and when you're running some serious loads, again, this week's a great test for this because it's gonna be close to 100 all week. And so I'll be watching that battery. I'll be watching the internal temperatures on the inverter and see how she does. So this is one of my 15K Battery only tests. All right, engineer 775, got to go home. Tired, hot, miserable, but victorious. So at least keeps me moving. <laughs> Let me know what comments you might have. Take care.